Index funds are one of the most powerful investments you can have to build wealth passively. Successful investors all over the world are taking advantage of this approach and is why one of the best investors of all time, Warren Buffett, states that by periodically investing in an index fund, the know-nothing investors can actually outperform most investment professionals. And in this video, I'm going to be covering a complete step-by-step -step tutorial to Fidelity, and that means even if you are an investor that knows nothing, if you watch this video all the way through, you're going to have the knowledge to outperform many of the pros. So first, let's start off with what exactly an index fund is. And it is a collection of different items that are on a list that you can put your money into and own. And that allows you to own every single item, all of the different items on the list within one purchase. Here's a real world example that's going to help you understand exactly what an index fund is. So let's say that you're checking out from the grocery store and you get a receipt once you are done with all your groceries. That list contains that you bought chicken for $10, strawberries for $5, orange juice for $2, and many more items that you could have bought. Now this receipt had 50 different items on it and it cost you $100 to get all of those items. So why is this the norm to have one receipt for all your items to be on? Well, for one, it's easier and it takes a lot less time than if you were to get 50 different receipts on every single item. It would just be crazy. I've never seen anybody do that. But you also don't want to just buy $100 worth of orange juice. You'd go crazy off of vitamin C. Now what's crazy though is that this concept applies exactly to index funds. And obviously not 100%, but you don't want to be buying 50 separate stocks. You also don't want 100% of your money in one stock. It's too much risk. As an overall view, you want a variety of stocks that maximize your potential returns, yet minimize the risk of losing money. And when you get a variety of stocks, it's just like the grocery store. You're getting a variety of items. You're not getting all orange juice. You're getting foods and drinks, many different types. One of the most known index funds that you can buy is the S&P 500 index that consists of 500 of the top publicly traded companies. These companies are all listed under the US stock exchanges and it basically resembles a broad scope of the entire US economy. Some of the top companies in this fund consist of Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. But because the S&P 500 is a collection of 500 different companies, instead of having to waste your time buying each one separately, it allows you to buy them all at once. And that is what buying the S&P 500 would do for you. So just like your grocery bill, you were able to buy all the items in one, you can buy all these companies in one. And to do that, it's seen on Fidelity as the Fidelity 500 Index Fund. Ticker symbol is FXAIX. Let's say the S&P 500 doesn't have enough companies. You want more. You want a deeper scope of the US economy. Well, it's your lucky day. You can get the Fidelity Total Market Index Fund that is FSKAX, and that has 3,966 companies in the fund. It's important to understand that an index fund is a type of mutual fund that is passively managed. Unlike other mutual funds that are actively managed by professionals that decide what investments to put into the fund, when to buy and sell, how to diversify, their goal is to outperform the market. They also have very high fees and I recommend not to buy them and I'll go over later in this video why that is. Index funds I am covering in this video are index based mutual funds. There are also index based ETFs that stands for exchange traded funds and examples of this within the S&P 500 ETFs would be the Vanguard 500 VOO or the iShares Core S&P 500 IVV and the returns are very similar with just a few trading differences. Something to remember is that most index funds have a five letter ticker symbol and typically ETFs have a three or four letter ticker symbol. And unlike exchange traded funds, ETFs, and even regular stocks, index funds are only traded once per day and that is when the market closes. So if you purchase the fund during the open market, you do not get it right away. And you also do not get it at the price of when you submit the order. You get it once the market closes and you get it at the price of which the fund ended at that market day when it closed. And if you are any bit confused or want to learn more, I will have a link in the description below to another video that will help explain the differences in much more detail. Now let's talk about the advantages to index funds. And according to one of the world's leading resources for benchmark statistics, the S&P Dow Jones indices have analyzed 89.38% of actively managed funds 
underperformed the S&P 500. Note that these actively managed companies are controlled by people with extremely high level of education, competitive careers, and spend all of their time looking for the best investments and how to diversify optimally. So what that means is say a random person on the street was to buy only the S&P 500 and that was it, they would outperform 90% of actively managed funds. To go even further, Warren Buffett won a $2.2 million bet against the hedge fund industry, stating that investing into the S&P 500 index fund over a 10 year period would outperform any hand-picked actively managed fund. And according to the results, many of the funds were not even close to winning the challenge. Now let's talk about the second advantage of index funds, and that is diversification. Let's say that you have two stocks, $10,000, 5,000 in each stock. For this example, one goes bankrupt. That means it goes all the way down to zero. That means that your investments would now have gone down from 10,000 to 5,000 because you were losing out on all the investment from one of those stocks. Now let's say instead of just two stocks, you owned the S&P 500 index, which consists of 500 companies. If you were to see one of those companies go bankrupt, your $10,000 investment would drop to a whopping $9,980. And the third advantage of index funds is the expense ratio, which is the annual cost it takes to own the index fund. This expense ratio, the cost, is taken out directly from the fund itself, and you do not have to pay this separately. This is something that will automatically happen. So when looking at an investment like the Fidelity 500 index fund, the expense ratio is 0.015% annually. The average mutual fund that may be 0.5 to 1%. Now let's talk about Fidelity's index funds and compare them to Charles Schwab and Vanguard. Let's first talk about the minimum required investment that you need to invest on each of these companies. Now Vanguard has a minimum of $3,000 to invest into their funds. Fidelity is a penny because it's nothing. If you invest anything, you are allowed to. There's no minimum requirement for Fidelity and the same goes for Charles Schwab. Another difference to look at is the expense ratio. And if we look at the Fidelity 500 index fund, the expense ratio is 0.015%. The Schwab S&P 500 index fund is 0.02% and the Vanguard 500 index fund is 0.04%. Although Fidelity is my personal favorite, I'm not gonna say which is better or worse because I really believe that all the returns on their investments are relatively equal and each one is a solid option to use. Let me know in the comments below because I'm really curious, what is your favorite or what do you think is the best one to use? Now let's go over the best Fidelity index funds. The first three funds are going to be domestic funds, which means they're all within one country and that is the US. Starting off with the first of the six is the Fidelity 500 index fund fund, ticker symbol is FXAIX. Now this fund is the most popular, which is why I've discussed so much of it in this video already, but it resembles a broad scope of the US economy, including the 500 top publicly traded companies in the US exchanges. The fund charges an annual 0.015% expense ratio, and since its inception when it was created, 1988, it has averaged over those years an annual return of 10.1%. Now, the second one to buy is the Fidelity Large Cap Index Fund, and there are 524 holdings in this fund. These companies are large, mature companies, and they have a prospect to have growth in the future, which means that there's more potential, but also potentially more risk to invest in this fund. This fund charges a 0.035% expense ratio, and since it was created in 2016, every year it's averaged an annual return of 14.86%. That's impressive, but be aware that they have not gone through any major downturns, recessions yet. Now the third index fund to buy is the Fidelity Total Market Index Fund, which is FSKAX, and this resembles the US economy in a deeper scope including small, mid, and large cap companies. This index fund consists of a 0.015% expense ratio, and since it was created in 1997, it has seen a 7.56% average annual return. All right, so that covers three domestic funds. Now I'm gonna go over two foreign funds. The first one being the Fidelity International Index Fund. Ticker symbol is FSPSX, and it covers the total return of stocks from foreign markets in the entire world. This fund charges a 0.035% expense ratio, and since it was created, it has seen a 4.43% average annual return. Now the fifth one to buy is the Fidelity Emerging Markets Index Fund. Ticker symbol FP. ADX. 
This basically covers emerging countries that have growth potential ahead of them, but they're not yet developed countries. This fund charges a 0.075% expense ratio, and since it was created, it has seen a 2.03% average annual return. Now you're probably wondering why invest into these foreign funds instead of domestic when they get higher returns. Because if the US was to collapse, those other ones allow you to minimize your losses and if you're saving for retirement or getting close to retirement, that will have a significant impact on your financial results and your entire life. Now, speaking about poor economic downturns and hedging against your losses, if you were to get this number six index fund, it will help and that is the Fidelity Total Bond index fund. Now this one you don't have to own a lot of, but at least put your foot in the door to start getting into this because as you get close to retirement, it is very important. This fund charges a 0.45% expense ratio, and since it was created, it has seen a 4.01% average annual return. So now you know some of the best index funds to buy in Fidelity, now let's talk about how to actually buy them. Now once you have an account to buy a specific index fund, you're going to click on the top right magnifying glass, and you're going to search the specific fund. For this case, let's say the Fidelity 500 index fund, FXAIX is the ticker symbol. From there, you're going to be able to see all the statistics for this fund. Looking at the top right, you can see where it says buy or sell. You're gonna click on buy if you wanna purchase it. So now it's asking to select which account I want to purchase this through. And this is gonna be in my Roth IRA. That's what I select. I'm gonna click on go. Then I'm going to double check everything is right. So this is gonna be traded under a mutual fund in my Roth IRA. This is how much cash I have available to trade. I'm doing this under FXAIX, which is the Fidelity 500 index fund. Action, what I'm going to do is click on buy. Now I'm going to look at a preview of this order. That is gonna show me all the details. And if I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to click on place order. As you can see in the yellow pop-up, it says this trade will be completed at the next available price. And that is because of what I discussed earlier in this video, where index funds, mutual funds, they only have transactions once per day, and that is when the market closes. Once you have your investments processed, you're going to be able to get dividends. And this doesn't happen every day, it doesn't happen instantly. For example, the Fidelity 500 index fund is paid out quarterly. So you're going to get dividend income every quarter, four times in a year, for owning that specific fund. It's critical that you understand the three options of what you can do with this dividend income when it comes in, and it can be automatic. So first, go to the summary page on your Fidelity account, click on more, and then click on account features. From there, it's gonna take you to this page, and you're gonna click on brokerage and trading, and then click on dividends and capital gains. And from there, it's going to pull up a dividends and capital gains page, and that's going to allow you to go through the three options I discussed. Let's look at the Fidelity Emerging Markets Index as an example. We're gonna click on update underneath the action, and from there, it's going to give us these three options. Reinvest in security, deposit to core account, and direct it. Reinvest in security, so if we do this for the Fidelity Emerging Markets Index, that is going to reinvest all of the dividend income that we are receiving every quarter, however often it is paid, it will always be reinvested automatically. Deposit to core account will put the dividend income straight to your core account as cash. That way you can use it for different purchases and funds, maybe different stocks, or maybe you just want the cash if you're not in a Roth IRA account. And the third option is directed. Right now I'm looking at the Fidelity Emerging Markets Index Fund, but I want the dividend income from this specific fund to go to my S&P 500 fund that I owned. So I am going to do this. I'm gonna click on directed, select mutual fund, Fidelity 500 Index Fund. That means that the dividends and capital gains from the Emerging Markets Index Fund is going to go straight to the Fidelity 500 Index Fund. Say that this is your favorite and you want to just collect as much over time in the Fidelity 500, you can apply this to all Fidelity mutual fund positions that are held in your current account. So all of the Fidelity funds that I own, they're going to have all the dividend income that they get go straight into the S&P 500 index fund. When it comes to planning your portfolio in the markets, there's an infinite amount of outcomes that could come based off of your decisions. So to reach the optimal decision, I'm gonna go over an overall guide for what I recommend. And the first thing would be to use the 110 rule, which means you take 110 and you subtract your age, and whatever that number is, that is the percentage of stocks compared to bonds that you own. So say that you're 30, it would be 110 minus 30, it'd be 80% stocks, 
20% in due bonds. This is a great approach because it provides a safety net as you get closer to the ideal retirement age. When you're younger, you can be a little bit more risky. But once you get closer and over time, you want to make sure you're allocating your assets in the right way. Because if not, and you get close to retirement, and then all of a sudden an economy, they have a major downturn, you might be screwed. And when it comes to your finances, you need to think about that ahead of time. So from the 110 rule, I'm now going to allocate my assets properly by using the three fund portfolio approach. That is domestic, foreign, and bond funds, allocating them properly. Now this entirely depends on your age, your position in your life, and when your ideal retirement age could be. And for me, I'm staying on the a little bit more of the aggressive side right now, and if you are interested, check this out. So as a general view, I right now am aiming towards 70% domestic, 20% foreign, and 10% bonds. That is because I am more on the aggressive side, and to be aggressive, you need to take risk. And taking risk means that you're in the higher risk reward scenario, which means that could be domestic funds. Large cap growth index fund, for example, is much more risk but if you hold on to it, there could be much more growth. And because I know you hit the like button on this video, to have a growth portfolio like this, I would recommend putting 40% into the Fidelity 500 Index Fund, FXAIX, which is domestic. I would put 20% in the FSPGX, Fidelity Large Cap Growth Index Fund, that is also domestic. I would do 10% in the FSKAX, Fidelity Total Market Fund, that is a domestic as well. Then I would do 10% in the FSPSX, Fidelity International Fund, that is foreign, which I've discussed these earlier in the video as well. 10% in the FPADX, Fidelity Emerging Markets Index Fund. And 10% in the FTBFX, Fidelity Total Bond Fund, that is a bond. Now, if you haven't noticed, these are the six that I recommended a few minutes ago that are the best index funds to buy in Fidelity. Let me know your thoughts about them in the comments below. I am very interested, honestly. And also, if you want to be on maybe a more moderate approach, all you would have to do is diversify, change your assets, allocate them. So what I mean by that is maybe take away some of the domestic and get a little bit more foreign or get some more bonds. Now, if you are curious to learn more about different types of funds, my next video is going to have a deeper scope of the difference between index funds, mutual funds, and ETFs. I highly recommend you check that out. I'll have a pop-up somewhere over here. Link in the description below as well once that video is created. With that being said, I appreciate and thank you all so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more Money Talk content.